So in this final lesson, we're going to ask ourselves a very interesting question. Are we living in a simulation, a computer simulation? This is a very deep philosophical issue. So specifically, we're going to have a little introduction, ask ourselves why we're even asking this question, if this is a course about the philosophy of artificial intelligence, what's a simulation got to do with anything? We're going to look at the sort of logical format of the simulation argument, why it makes sense. Uh, logically and then we're gonna you know have a look if we can if are we able to prove that we're living in a simulation so as an introduction what's the simulation hypothesis got to do with the philosophy of artificial intelligence well if we're if the simulation hypothesis is true then we must be living in a machine we must be part of a computer so the question could be are we part are we computers? Are we are parts of a computer? You know, entities, lines of code within a simulation. Is that what we are? And there are lots of different ways we can approach this argument. Uh, first, we're going to have a look at a little thought experiment. So, if you're not convinced by the idea that we are living in uh, The Sims, if we are part of this quite scary looking world, part of this thought experiment, let's have a look at really why it has. A few, quite a few followers and why it's quite convincing so first of all as humans we are able to create simulations okay that's true we can create the sims here you've got minecraft you know all these things are simulations it's also true that with technological improvements we've been able to improve the the immersion of simulations so the first ever sims game didn't have the kind of graphics that this sims game had and it keeps on improving and improving and improving as technological improvements continue now let's assume that technological developments will continue and there's no reason to suggest that they won't there's no reason to suggest that we're just going to stop you know understanding technology better and let's also assume that these improvements that will continue will also yield to improving the immersions of these simulations so their simulations get better and better and again there's no reason why we should say that they that that's not going to happen because if you look at the sort of history of gaming games from the 1960s and 1970s compared to games today the graphics and the 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 frame rates and the 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 growth the size of the worlds that you can explore it keeps on getting better and better now we can imagine that a species with an infinitely more advanced technology than us infinitely more advanced could create near perfectly immersive simulations where the people in the simulations have free will now we can assume that that's true if there's going to be a perfectly advanced uh, you know almost perfectly immersive simulation that could exist it's going to be the case that a perfectly uh, you know an infinitely advanced um, civilization will have created it now let's assume also that the characters in the simulation have free will because we want to make it immersive and if they don't have free will then it's not a very immersive simulation so if it's a most uh, at least at least we say have the perception of free will because there's a lot of um, debate as to whether or not we have free will, but at least we have the we sort of have the perception of free will. So that's what we need to make an immersive simulation. Well, if these characters in this simulation have free will and they believe that they're real, then the same thing will happen in that simulation. They will create a simulation which is also immersive, and you can see where the you can see where the the chain is going to start to form. Every single time a, an immersive free will based simulation is created, the characters within that simulation will also have the desire to create an immersive free will based simulation, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, until it's almost an infinite amount of simulations. So now let's, we've got this almost infinite chain of, uh, of different simulations, one inside the other. The question is, the question we should ask is, if this continues and there's a near infinite number of simulations, what are the statistical chances that we're in the original world and we're not in one of the simulations? At the end of the day, the answer is very, very low. What are the chances of us being in that one real world compared to the almost infinite simulations? 
<laughs> this is quite scary stuff. So, if we're going to actually add some, you know, get some actual philosophical names to this, uh, add it to the add it to the the roster of our understanding of AI. The philosopher Nick Bostrom, in his paper "Are You Living in a Computer Simulation," which is a very good title, proposes that an infinitely more advanced civilization would have the technology to create a perfectly immersive simulation. And if this is the case, then it statistically is more likely that we are part of a created simulation than part of a real world which has evolved over billions of years. This is because there will be more simulations, possibly infinitely more simulations than true realities. If we're taking this assumption, we're assuming that there's only one true reality. And if there's an infinitely advanced civilization which is able to create technology to create an immersive sim simulation, then they have the ability to create more than one immersive simulations. So there are more immersive simulation simulated realities than there are real realities. So statistically, the chances of us landing in, you know, being in the real one or a, or a simulated reality, it's more likely that we're in a simulated reality. So statistically, it's the case that we are in a simulation. Now, what about a more pragmatic argument? What about just looking around and seeing if we're in a simulation? So how do we know anything exists? Right now, I can say that my laptop exists because I'm using it to create this lesson and this and this video and this presentation. But what happens when I go outside and go for a walk? I cannot see, feel, or hear my laptop when I'm outside, if I'm far enough away. So how do I know it's still existing? Could it just be the case that the second we close our eyes, reality you know, closes around us? The, the only thing that exists is what we have in our own brain, and that everything else is a simulation. The answer is, is I can't know. I can't know if my if it, it, if it is, exists or if it doesn't exist. And if we're assuming that statistically we're probably more likely to be in a simulation then really you know it's 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 landing more likely that it's more likely to be the case that whenever i look away my laptop does disappear it is just simulated for when i'm for when i see it and this is a very quite a scary uh, quite a, you know a mind blown kind of uh, kind of response what is preventing us from believing that we're in a simulation and that everything around us is just simulated? It's it's what's known as it's an unfalsifiable claim. So what I mean by this is it cannot be proven to be false. I cannot prove that this laptop disappears every time I look away from it because physically, in order to prove something, I have to actually experience the thing that to prove it. And that's impossible to do if every time... I look if to prove it I'll have to you know remove my experience from it so it becomes unfalsifiable it means it cannot be proven to be false and there's a more humorous example that we can look at and that's the example of Rick and Morty so in the episode 1 season 4 sorry season 1 episode 4 in the episode M. Night Shama Aliens Rick, Morty and Jerry are trapped in multiple layers of a simulation and it's their task to try and get out of the simulation. And every time they think that they've left the simulation, they realise that they're actually still in a different simulation. And what's stopping us from thinking something is similar? What's interesting is, and a more famous example would be the Matrix films. What's interesting is, in the case of Rick and Morty, the reason why they knew that they were in a simulation is because the simulation was actually quite poor. There were lots of bugs in the simulation, just like there were bugs in real simulations that we understand on our computers. And we could really understand that if that's the only way of trying to find out if we're in a simulation or not, to try and see almost um, like bugs in reality, like not bugs as in the insects, but like, you know, problems with reality that don't make sense that could suggest that we're in a simulation. And if we're also suggesting that it's an infinitely advanced civilization that has created the simulation, that is almost perfectly immersive, it becomes almost impossible to, to, to work out whether or not we're in a simulation or not. It becomes almost, effectively, it's an impossible task to prove. 
And this is a view that is held by our old friend Elon Musk, if you're wondering why he's uh, on the cover of Times magazine on this presentation. This is a view that he, he sort of ascribes to, or at least he's questioned it in the past. And again, if you want to have a look at what he says about it, that could be a research task for you to do. So as a lesson review, this is probably the most fun task, the official task that I'd give you. So watch that episode of Rick and Morty, watch The Matrix if you can, watch both of them if, you, if you're able to, and really get an idea for, and sort of watch them with, in the back of your mind, this lesson, and think about really what, what this, what it means to be in a simulation, and how it's effectively impossible to prove. And I want to say thank you for uh, watching these lessons, thank you for watching this course, I'm going to be doing lots and lots of other uh, philosophy videos, um, and philosophy courses similar to this, just short, um, more interactive, more fun, and less less dry, uh, you know, less intellectual kinds of uh, of philosophical inquiry. Because you know, it, to to try and market it to you know to a to a larger audience, you've got to really take away the the boring aspects of philosophy. So that's why we're going to look at some more interesting areas of philosophy, and that's why we've looked at the philosophy of AI.